welcome to FIA Pure Motorsport. On this week's episode, we'll travel to Jordan to bring you some really great action from the Jordan Bob. We'll have the best action from the opening round of the FIA Historic Rally Championship. And we'll take a closer look at a remarkable young driver, Alia Kolic, and much, much more from the FIA World of Motorsports. The second round of the FIA World Cup for Cross Country Bajas and the opening encounter in the Middle East Series is fought out over two legs through the spectacular Martian-like landscapes of Jordan's Vadi Rum and Vadi Araba in southern Jordan. On the first day, the 20 crews have to take on the first of two competitive sections of 232 kilometers and 81 kilometers through Vadi Rum. And from the start, the heat is on. Just 12 kilometers into the first stage, Saudi Arabia's leading driver and pre-race favorite Yazid Al-Raji in his Toyota Hilux breaks his drive shaft, losing around 80 minutes. After the first leg, he is just in 12th place. That opens the door for the other crews. The biggest surprise on the first day is 17-year-old driver Alia Kolaj, who despite her lack of experience, finishes fifth overall and second in the T3 category for lightweight prototype machines. Miroslav Zaplatal from the Czech Republic finishes in fourth place on day one in his Ford F-150. Right in front of him are two category T4 Can-Am Mavericks, Mshari Altafir in third place and Case Colin in second place. But Saleh Al Saif is comfortably the fastest driver through the first sections in his Can-Am. The Saudi and his Russian co-driver Igor Okotnikov stay clear of trouble and storm to a 6 minute 44 second overnight lead. After leg one, Saleh Al Saif is in front of Case Colin and Mshari Al Tafia, who is just eight seconds behind the Dutch driver. On day two, the competitors visit Vadi Araba for the first time. The stunning geographical feature runs from the Gulf of Aqaba to the southern shores of the Dead Sea, and drivers tackle a 150 kilometer long selective section. Yazid Al-Raji tries everything in storms to the fastest time in the Vadi Araba, but the time deficit is too much for the Saudi to break into the top 10, and he reaches the finish in Aqaba in 12th overall. Spanish driver Fernando Alvarez also has a great day. He quickly improves two places and then tries to attack Alia Koloch in fifth place. But the 17-year-old Emirati girl defends her solid position and ends the rally with a top five finish and a second place finish in the T3 category. A stunning performance. Amshari um, Altafir pushes hard across the rain-soaked tracks of Wadi Araba and manages to snatch third place overall and the T4 win from Case Colon. With a great performance, Miroslav Zaplatal once again creates excitement. The experienced Czech pilot fights his way closer and closer to the leader, Saleh Al Saif. But in the end, the Saudi Arabian is able to fend off the late challenge to seal the win by a margin of 2 minutes 56 seconds. He becomes the first ever driver of a T3 lightweight prototype vehicle to win an international FIA Baja event. Saleh Al Saif edges Miroslav Zaplatal for his first win of the new season. A good third place for Imshari Al Tafiri. The biggest surprise at the Baja Jordan was clearly Alia Koloch. The 17-year-old newcomer quickly reached 5th place in the overall and 2nd place in the T4 category. 
On the other hand, it's not all that surprising when you take a closer look at the unusual and unique career of this extraordinary young woman. It's also important to note that Aliyah lives with Asperger's syndrome, also known as Asperger's. It's an autism spectrum disorder, but differs from other ASDs by relatively unimpaired language and intelligence. Aliyah's sport until an injury cut that short was tennis. After that, she was looking for a new challenge, and it is a particularly big one in the truest sense of the word, truck racing. What motivates a 16-year-old to race a five-ton vehicle? Let's find out. Well, my father was a truck racing, and my uncle, David, he was racing, so it was just all around me. So then I, last year I played tennis, and then I stopped, so then I tried trucks. Her father is multiple ETRC champion Martin Kolach and owner of the Bagura Racing Team. In 2019, she took part in test drives for the first time, and tennis was quickly forgotten. Completely different. I like that when I'm truck racing this time, I'm covered. I have a cabin and a helmet, because in tennis, I didn't like how everyone sees my every move. So I'm happy I'm closed. In August 2020, as the youngest driver in the history of the ETRC, she drove her first race in most Czech Republic and immediately made it into the points. And she believes her Asperger's proved to be helpful. I think it does in little ways. Probably helps me like, focus more. Sometimes, like, probably your mind can be somewhere else, so I can focus more on what I'm doing. So I think it, I think it helps me. Aliyah, looking for new challenges, raced a 600 horsepower Mercedes AMG GT3 car after the truck season. I liked it very much. It was, I drove it last here weekend, last weekend with the trucks. It was very difficult. So with the GT, it was much easier. So I enjoyed it very much. This spring, she made her debut in the FIA Middle East Cup together with her sister Yasmin. Another step on the way to fulfilling her big dream, participating in the Dakar Rally next year. No wonder then that the shy 17-year-old has only one piece of advice for all young girls that want to get into racing. I would say all your dreams basic the truth. And that's exactly what Alia Kolic is doing with great success. This year, the Formula Regional Asian Championship certified by FIA saw an impressive 28-car entry. The entries included drivers representing 15 nations, among them four F1 Junior Academy talents. 16-year-old American Jack Crawford from the Red Bull Junior Team, 17-year-old Paul Aran, member of the Mercedes Junior Team, and they're joined by Ferrari Driver Academy members Dino Baganovic and Artur Leclerc, the 21-year-old younger brother of current Ferrari F1 ace Charles. The season was held over five consecutive weekends with three races per weekend. The opening round was at Yas Marina Circuit and there was one driver surprising everybody. 16-year-old Sebastian Montoya, son of F1 Grand Prix and Indy 500 winner Juan Pablo. Sebastian took the victory from pole position in race one. He confirmed his very good early form with a fourth and tenth place finish in the next two races. The most consistent driver on the first weekend was Arthur Leclerc. The Monegasque finished on the podium twice with two third places. But both drivers were outperformed by the young Italian Gabriele Mini. With a second place in race one and a victory in the third race, he took the lead in the overall standings. Just a three-point lead for Gabriel Mini, Arthur Leclerc in second position, and Sebastian Montoya in third. For round two, the series headed to the Dubai Autodrome, and the second triple header was dominated by Frenchman Hadrien David, who was lightning quick all weekend and won the opening and closing races.
Arthur Leclerc claimed his first series win in the second race and scored again in the other two races, six races, six times in the points. His consistency puts him atop the driver classification with 73 points, nine ahead of Hadrian David and 12 clear of Hajar in third. The third race weekend was dominated by the drivers of the Mumbai Falcons India racing team. In the first race, Sebastian Montoya was unstoppable. The youngster showed once again why he has a great future ahead of him and bagged his second victory. His teammates naturally wanted to follow suit. Dino Baganovic drove from eighth on the grid to his first win, a great success for the Swede. But Artur Leclerc outshone them all. After a second and third place, he is on top of the podium after the last race of the weekend. So not only a successful race weekend for the Mumbai Falcons, but also for Leclerc, who extends his lead in the championship. With a lead of 35 points, he is ahead of Spanish driver Pepe Marti and teammate Sebastian Montoya. The penultimate round saw in race one a spectacular and hard-fought battle between Isaac Hajar and Paul Aron for first place. For almost the entire race, the two gave each other nothing. In the end, Hajar prevailed. The first win of the season for the 17-year-old Frenchman. Race two was decided at the start. 17-year-old pole sitter Francesco Bracci's lead was short-lived, however, as he, Patrick Pazma, and Oli Beerman headed into turn one in a threesome. Pazma took the lead and later became the season's eighth winner. A great performance by the Finn. With a fourth and a fifth place, it had been a rather quiet weekend for the championship leader until the third race. But then Arthur Leclerc turned up the heat. Again, it was Paul Aron who was in the lead and this time lost it to the Monegasque. This was already the third victory for Leclerc. The 21-year-old increased his lead over Pepe Marti to 40 points before the final race weekend. And this took place again at Yas Marina Circuit. In race one, Arthur Leclerc had the pole position and blasted off the grid as the lights went out. The Ferrari Driver Academy talent dominated the race on his way to a pole to flag victory, taking the first title of his career with two races to spare. Arthur Leclerc won four races and scored points in every single other race. There was a double celebration in the Mumbai Falcons pit as the Indian Motorsport team clinched the team title after a phenomenal season in the championship. In the end, Leclerc was 60 points in front of super rookie Pepe Marti. Isaac Hajar finished the season in third place. Spaniard Neil Solans bagged his first FIA European Rally Championship victory after a dominant drive at Rally Serra de Fafe in Portugal. The 29-year-old left his rivals floundering as relentless rain, thick fog and muddy gravel tracks bombarded the season opener in northern Portugal. Solans, the ERC superstar, took the lead in his VW Polo GTIR 5 on the first gravel speed test and he controlled the rally from then onwards. He maintained a healthy gap and finally sealed his maiden ERC triumph by 55.7 seconds in front of Portuguese driver Arruyo Amindo and Estonian Georg Lineme in third position. The 48th Rally Bandama of the Ivory Coast was the opening round of the new Africa Rally Championship season. The battle for the title was a duel between Avorian Cyril Botari and Abdallah Hejazi in their Subaru Impreza and Zambezians Leroy and Ursula Gomez. Gomez was in the lead from the start, but Botari stayed on him and was very unlucky when he damaged his rear axle during special stage 7 and had to retire. This opened the way for the Zambezian couple in their Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 4. 
They took their first win at the Rally Bantama and the lead in the ARC standings. Karen Graham are among the prominent faces at historic rally events. They are husband and wife in normal life and pilot and co-pilot when they sit together in a rally car. The British couple are an integral part of the historic rally community and they enjoy the events. I love the, the community, sort of almost like we're a little family with our team, which is very nice. So at the end of the day, it's all about people. Fascination of historic rally is, I guess, principally the cars that we drive, but there's also the competition that is possible and the camaraderie that comes along with that. With historic rallying, there's very, very professionally run events in absolutely lovely locations and there's uh, lots of people who are passionate about driving and enjoying the cars and the places that we go to. Both have been passionate about motorsports since their early childhood. Well, we come from uh, sort of a background in Northern Ireland and uh, many of our friends and family members have been interested in motorsport and so it's something that goes way back from my teenage years and my wife was from the same background. In 1994, shortly after their marriage, they were living in the Middle East and decided to start rallying. They drove their first three rallies together. Ernie then switched to historic cars in 2001. From the beginning, it was clear to him that his car could only be a Ford Escort. Ford Escort was my first car. I've rallied Ford Escorts for nearly 30 years. It's an iconic uh, car in the, in the world of rallying. It's a joy to be driving it, um, again, in a way that it was intended to. The, the Escorts were uh, on road cars when I was young. When I first met Ernie, he was driving a Ford Escort as a road car, so... Um, we're from that, from that era. The two have been driving together oh, yeah. again since 2018, a team that complements each other perfectly, privately, and also on the rally stages. I think he's very, very talented. I don't know how basically he does it. I can't believe I'm going as fast as I am going sometimes. <laughs> and um, no, I'm very impressed with his rallying. And, I think that's why it works, there's a high degree of trust between us. I'm quite good at multitasking, I'm quite good at putting under pressure. Um, yeah, probably that's my, my strength. Yeah, I don't get flustered easily, I think. I guess it's the time of life. Lots of us are sort of coming towards retirement age. And uh, so, yeah, it's just lovely to do stuff together. And uh, doing motorsport is uh, something where there's a, the team's important as well. So it's lovely that we can uh, kind of do that together and um, do something that we enjoy and rely on each other's um, uh, expertise. We really love motorsport. Um, it's been fantastic in our, in our life, in our, in our marriage. Historic Rally Championship returns to Spain for round one of the 2022 season. The historic city of Girona in Catalonia is the home of the Rally Costa Brava, which celebrates the 70th edition of Spain's oldest rally this year. On day one, the Rally Costa Brava sees six special stages with rain in the morning and then dry in the afternoon, providing the teams with a tough decision on tire strategy. And the Category 3 reigning champion Zippo in his Audi Quattro makes the wrong decision in the morning. He doesn't put on rain tires and loses a lot of time. Last season's dominant driver is only in 41st place after the first three special stages, already almost four minutes behind the leader in the overall standings. With the right tires, he then starts a great race to catch up in the afternoon. Zippo posts the fastest time on all three stages in the afternoon to close the gap to 41.2 seconds to Michael Putz. 
has been really, really bad because uh, we uh, we fixed our wrong uh, tires. Uh, we used the the T5, it's a medium tire, and uh, uh, we found a lot of water, so it's impossible to drive with a closed tire on the, under the, the the rain. So now at the the service pack, we we changed the tire. We we tried to do recovery. Austrians Michael and Elizabeth Putz in their Porsche 911 SC have a great first leg. They're posting the fastest category three times on the first three stages. At the end of the day, they are the overnight leaders in category three and in a good 13th place overall. Five right here and long three left. Into long late six right, long three left here. Into long late six right Titans. Ernie and Karen Graham are the overnight leaders in category one. The British crew takes the fastest time on five of the six stages. They finished the day 1 minute 38.1 seconds ahead of the reigning Category 1 champions Antonio Parisi and Giuseppe D'Angelo in the number 33 Porsche 911 S 2.0. In Category 2, the Ford Escort RS1800 of Marty McCormick and Barney Mitchell is leading after three stages, but the Irish crew's luck changes when they hit a rock and the suspension on the Escort breaks. That opens the door for Carlo Miel and Oliver Laporte. After day one, the Belgians have an overnight lead in category two. The battle for the overall lead, however, takes place among the category four cars. In the end, the BMW M3 E30 of Swiss driver Pascal Parut and his French teammate Denis Giraudet is at the head of the leaderboard by nearly 30 seconds. Close behind them in the Lancia Delta Intragale are Lucky and Fabrizia Pons in second position. And just 14.3 seconds behind the Italians in third spot is the BMW M3 of Jean-Francois Marc and Thierry Barriou. After day one, there are two BMW M3s in the top three places overall. On day two, the tire choice is easy because the weather is wet and cold. The final six special stages run in tricky conditions in the mountains to the west of Girona. Ernie and Karen Graham take advantage of their overnight lead in category one. The British crew taking the fastest time on five of the six stages on day two and the Flexifly rally team to complete their first victory in category one since 2019. They finish the day three minutes, 10 seconds ahead of the reigning category one champions, Antonio Parisi and Giuseppe D'Angelo in the Porsche 911 S 2.0. Italians Carlo Fiorito and Marina Bertonesco finish in third place in their BMW 2002 Ti. In category two, Marty McCormick and Barney Mitchell in the Ford Escort RS1800 have a great day. They close the gap to the leaders by nearly five minutes and put a lot of pressure on the Belgian team. But the challenge proved to be too great and Carlo Mael and Olivier Laporte take the Category 2 honors in Spain in their Porsche 911 Carrera RSR 3.0 by just 26.6 seconds. Overnight Category 3 leaders Michael and Elizabeth Putz in the Porsche 911 SC have another good day when they prove themselves again with good times. But the Audi Quattro of reigning champion Zippo is on a charge after the problems of day one. Zippo and his Italian teammate Nicola Arena are into the maximum attack mode in the slippery conditions, closing the gap by 30 seconds on special stage seven and going ahead of the Austrians on special stage eight. They win category three and finish fourth place overall. <laughs> The first three spots in the Rally Costa Brava go to Category 4 cars. The Lancia Delta Integrale of Lucky and Fabrizia Pons finishes in third position. Up front, it's a duel of two BMW crews. The BMW M3 of Jean-Francois Morg and Thierry Barriou has to settle for second place overall after a great fight. The BMW M3 E30 of Swiss driver Pascal Parut and his French teammate Denis Giraudet holds off all challenges. They post the fastest time on two of the stages and keep in close contact at the top of the leaderboard on the other four stages to claim maximum championship points after the opening round of the 2022 season. 
In the end, they lead by only 1 minute 25 seconds ahead of Jean-Francois Morgue, lucky with a great third place finish. That's it for today. On our next episode of FIA Pure Motorsport, we'll be searching for the next big FIA rally star. We'll be electrified by the Eco Rally Cup Valencia. And we'll show you the highlights of the beautiful Rally Kenya. Till next time, take care, everybody, and ciao.